This video shows you how to create your first Markdown web text. It assumes you've already visited the resources page and have viewed the Getting Started with Markdown video. That video asks you to go through the Common Mark tutorial and to attempt creating your first Markdown document with StackEdit. This tutorial you are viewing now will actually show you how to create your first web text using Markdown. So let's get started. The first thing we'll want to do is connect Stack Edit to Dropbox. So going into our Dropbox folder, you'll want to open your public folder and then within there create another folder that you'll use to hold the files for your single web page. So I'm just going to call this folder web text. There it is. Go ahead and open that. And then within Stack Editor, assuming you've already loaded in a, a Markdown file that you've previously written, if you haven't, go ahead and click the hashtag and click Import from Disk. And then you can browse to select or drag and drop the files. I won't do that because I've already loaded in my history.markdown file. So what you want to do is click the Publish button and select Dropbox, because that's how we're hoping to publish this to the web as an HTML file based on the markdown that we wrote for our file that we currently have loaded in. So click on Dropbox. And you'll see here, template is selected, just as with the previous video where we exported to disk using template, we're going to publish using template. Now the template is HTML, as you can see here with Doctype, uh, but it's different than just raw HTML, which is what would happen if you clicked that option. So we want the page to be styled and to look nice, so we're going to click Template. So in order to do this, in order to, to sync it up with Drop, Dropbox, we have to give it the exact file path. You can easily find that by clicking your Dropbox folder and looking at here at the top of the page this is basically the path to your file so we don't need to write Dropbox because it already is trying to sync with Dropbox but we need public and web text in that order so if we come back here write public now I'm writing it with a capital P just to be case sensitive because this one is and then forward slash web text because that's the next folder and then I'll go ahead and give it a file name and I'll call it history.html. Now you could call yours whatever you want to call it. I called mine history because this is the history page for the site you're currently viewing. And go ahead and click OK. And now Stack Edit is taking your markdown, converting it to HTML using the template and loading it into Dropbox for you. And there it is. Now to see this web page, based on the markdown and the template, copy to clipboard and paste it in the browser. Let's look at it. And there it is. So the next thing we're going to do is change the basic styling with the page. We're going to do some very basic web design with markdown using Stack Edit, And we're going to change the CSS that, that um, affects the way the page is viewed. It affects the font, it affects how wide it is, the margins, it affects the font size, it affects all sorts of things, the color of the text, the background. So if you go to Google and you search for Markdown CSS, there's all sorts of options. I found a GitHub page with a bunch of collection of themes. And they actually have a nice viewer for letting you see them. So if we look, they kind of give you an example of what it would look like if you used their CSS to style your text. You can see here that the, the width is different than our page, right? So this page is quite wider, right? This one's thinner. You can go and click on some of these different ones. This one's a bit wider, different font style, different font size. Again. So let's use this one. This one's pretty different. We'll use screen.css.
And if we come back to his GitHub page, we can download all of these and actually play with different ones if you want. But we're going to go ahead and just try one of them. So we'll click Download Zip, which will give us all the files in this GitHub page. Save file. We'll save it to my desktop. And then you'll need to go ahead and extract the file. I already have it here because I've downloaded this earlier, but I'll go ahead and show you how to do this. Click extract here. It'll be something similar for other operating systems, but usually you can right click a zip file to extract it. And if we open it, we see that there's a bunch of different stuff in here. He has his HTML and his other files for the examples. But what we want are, are the different CSS files. So the one that, that I like that um, was a bit different just to show sort of an extreme change was screen.css. Let's find that one. Here it is, screen.css. So I'm just going to copy this to my desktop so it's easy to find it. And what you're going to want to do is go ahead and upload this to this same Dropbox folder. So what we'll do is go ahead and upload. Choose Files. And there's screen.css on the desktop. Okay, and there we are. That's our CSS file that will change the way history.html looks. So let's go back to Stack Editor and let's change the CSS file. So let's go back to Publish, select Dropbox. And again, we need to put in the file path, public, web text, history, history.html. And then at this part here, this is a bit intimidating, but what you're looking for is for where it says style sheet and CSS. You see these two items here? Now it's basically one section of HTML code that calls the CSS style sheet that controls the way the HTML looks. So we need to change the part that's within the quotes behind href equals. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight that specifically. You want to make sure to save those two quotes because we just want to change what's inside there. And let's go back to Dropbox and let's double check. So our file name is just screen.css. And I'll come back and just type screen.css. So before you click OK, sorry, just double check. Make sure href equals quote screen.css quote and everything else is the same. Click OK. And it tells us it's now uploaded to our Dropbox. So let's look. OK, six seconds ago. So we should just be able to reload our page, and it should be changed. And there it is. We've changed the, the way the page looks entirely by selecting a new CSS file. Now you can go in, and you can find others. You can keep trying and changing. But this is just the very basics of web design where we're taking a CSS file, changing it to change the way our page looks. Now, if you're really adventurous, you can open up that CSS file and try to edit it yourself. Try to see what changes, maybe try to break something. Um, there are plenty of tutorials on how to mess with aspects of CSS. I'm not going to show that today or teach that today as part of this video but it's something to pay attention to if if that if as you get comfortable with markdown you want to progress forward into css and html that's how i learned html then this is a great way to get started but for now all you have to do is just pick some other css's change them find one that you like you don't have to code the css yourself you can just find one that works for the single web page that you want to put on the web the last thing we're going to do here is actually make this a multimodal document. So I could put in some images, but I actually want to take a step for, uh, further and embed a video. So we're going to use YouTube here for this.
and we're going to go ahead and embed a YouTube video in our page and then re-upload the page. So underneath most YouTube videos, some of them have the, this disabled, but assuming this is your own video that you're wanting to load into a page or another video from, for some reason loaded into your page, you want to click the share button and underneath the share button, click embed. This gives you the exact HTML code you need to embed this in your web page. So we're just going to copy this and come back to Stack Edit. So one of the benefits of Markdown is that any place that you find shortcomings with Markdown, you can actually just draw drop in raw HTML. So if you actually look at my text, I dropped in a bit of raw HTML already because I needed to create those brackets that are in the title of the book that I'm quoting. If you just put brackets into Markdown, they don't show up because um, they're often used to create code, to do other things. And anything that you put between brackets, it assumes that it's HTML code. So since I had the letter A between two brackets, it actually disappeared. As you can see on the left-hand side, it disappeared on the right-hand side. So I actually needed to use raw HTML to draw those brackets rather than just dropping them in. So for YouTube, to drop in a YouTube video, we'll go ahead and just paste in that code we copied. So this is the exact code from YouTube, and you can see it automatically embeds it on the right-hand side. So two things you want to pay attention to is width and height. So I'm going to change this to be a bit bigger. Let's make this 600, and you can see it immediately changes on the right-hand side. Let's make this 400. There we go. So I feel like that fits a little better. Let's let's look at our other page. I think that'll be the right size we want there. Now you can come back and change it multiple times, but we're going to just do it this one time. So again, we're going to go to publish. Select Dropbox. Put in our file path. and click OK. Now we can go back to our web page and reload it. And there we have embedded a YouTube video in our single web page. So now I could easily take this and share this, email it, however. Um, but this is the basics of creating a single page web text using Markdown, Stack Edit, and Dropbox to host.